What's up, everyone? Welcome to St. Phil Sports History for September 21st, 2023. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Happy opening day of training camp for the Flyers. Flyers training camp opens today. Very good interview yesterday I heard with Danny Briere. Acknowledged, obviously, I think it was obvious to anybody who knows anything about anything. But they're in a rebuilding, and this is a very important season for him. Trying to figure out the young guys, see which direction they want to move. He was very clear to say no tanking. Uh, that it was important to develop the young guys and create a winning culture. And I think that is probably the best way to go about it. Uh, If you look back at the process with the Sixers, uh, I I was a proponent, and I still am, of the way they, they did things. But there is that sort of fine line between getting the right young guys in. And I know in basketball it's different because of Uh, the amount of guys that are on a team versus the amount of guys that play in soccer. But we we heard Doc Rivers talk about the stench of losing and and things like that. So it's important to develop those young guys. You don't want to be too good and and get into that purgatory level. But at the same time, you want – because you obviously want the draft picks, but you want to develop some of the young guys and see what you have and and get back to the culture of winning with the Flyers. Um, I've – Giving you my take on the Sixers, if you go back to one of the Back to the Futures where we talked about the 86 offseason, I feel as though the the stench of losing in that organization is is pretty bad. Going back even into, uh, I don't want to really get into that, it's a whole different thing, but I think the Sixers organization in general has some things. So hopefully Danny Breyer and the Flyers go the right way and do this rebuilding process the right way. But uh, as I've mentioned, a lot of times looking forward to to getting more into hockey, increasing my knowledge, and and just being uh, a more well-rounded four for four guy. So happy opening day of training camp to all of you out there who are celebrating today. I've been telling you about the Flyers. I'm telling you now is the time to get on the bandwagon. What better way to get on the bandwagon than buy some new Flyers gear? Go to phillygoat.com. They have a great selection of Flyers gear along with any of the other teams in Philly. Uh, any size, any color you want. They they have a couple uh, nice black bully shirts. Uh, I will be uh, adding to my Flyers wardrobe from phillygoat.com. Be sure to use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off of your order. That's phillygoat.com. Use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off of your order and get in on the Flyers bandwagon now before it's too late. All right, a couple quick housekeeping notes. New Back to the Future dropped overnight. I really figured out and learned how to use the premiere button. So new episodes now drop at midnight on Wednesday nights when I have them ready. Uh, Sticking with the Flyers theme uh, and kind of tying in with something we did on here with the numbers. We did number four uh, last weekend, and Barry Ashby of the Flyers was one of the number fours. And as I was researching, found out more about his life and career and, and wanted to dive deeper into that. So this week, we take a look at the life and career of Barry Ashby. Check that out on Back to the Future, wherever you get your podcasts. It's Back to the Future with a PH. And something I don't usually do a lot on this podcast that I do all the time on Back to the Future is just kind of explain the difference. So I'll take a couple seconds here. And obviously, if you're listening to this, you know this is this day in Philly sports history. It's a basically that. This is this day in Philly sports history, I take a look at the current state of Philly sports, and then we do something fun. We've been doing the Who Wore It Best for September. Back to the Future is that podcast that I take a deeper dive, so it's a longer form, usually anywhere between 20 and 60 minutes, but very, very rarely do I go to 60 minutes um, unless I'm interviewing somebody and it's a good interview and I, I want to keep it going. Uh, But again, it's a deeper dive, and it's Back to the Future with a PH, still available wherever you get your podcasts as well as on YouTube. Like I said, we took a deeper dive into Barry Ashby. I got a lot of good things on the horizon for both podcasts, so stay tuned. Best way to stay in the loop is to like and subscribe. So smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, and just be in the loop like all the other cool kids who are here listening every day. All right, good win for the Phils yesterday. Six to five in 10 innings. Uh, they took two out of three from the Braves in Atlanta, uh, which I was hoping they would. And again, I don't know how much the Braves, from a lineup standpoint, pulled back at all. 
Um, I know they were, may have been trying some different things, but uh, obviously there may or may not have been an effort. But, I mean, that team is good. They're really good. So to go down there and take two out of three is amazing. Castellanos with two home runs. Um, I, I, I got a little nervous when I saw the foul ball there in the ninth that uh, he caught. Luckily, it was a good throw, and they were able to throw uh, the guy out at home, win it in 10. Uh, but again, things are looking good. They're down to like the final sprint now, and uh, Nola finally looked good. So hopefully, he's able to build the next couple of starts off of that. Uh, they have ten games left: uh, seven against the Mets, three against the Pirates. So from a schedule standpoint, they kind of get a little bit of a break to get things right and, and gain some confidence. Um, now. Typically, that's what should happen. Um, I know I talked last year a lot about new Philly versus old Philly. So the old Philly mentality still creeps his head one time. And this is where they, they should be okay. But it's like, uh, this is where they go. And for those of you keeping score at home, today is the anniversary of the beginning of the collapse of 1964. So maybe that's why that's fresh on my head. Uh, that is not that That is not today's this day, but just a kind of a bonus this day in Philly sports history. Today was the day that Chico Ruiz stole home, sending the Phillies into that tailspin. Um, so maybe that's why I'm having that old Philly mindset. But uh, 10 games left, 7 against the Mets, 3 against the Pirates. Should be okay. The magic number is 7 for that top seed, uh, and the second seed for that matter, and 6 just to make the playoffs. And just a side note that we'll be following over the next 10 days since it's a nice little sprint. I took the Phillies win total over 88 and a half at the beginning of the season. In order for me to cash that bet, they need to go six and four out of the next 10 games. So we will keep the, the over 88 and a half win tracker going as we go through this as well. Uh, quick Eagles news. They DeAndre Swift was the offensive player of the week for the NFC. Uh, the, they did interview Sean Desai yesterday and asked about whether or not Bradbury would be moving to the slot now that uh, Avante Maddox is out. And he says, eh, I don't know, because he it, Matt, or uh, Bradbury is a veteran and he likes what he brings. So uh, anxious to see what goes on the rest of this week and then see what the Phil, or the Phils, the Eagles roll out on Monday night. Uh, but just sort of one of those things that it's worth keeping an eye on just because it could be a, a, a disastrous injury for for the Phillies. So or for the Eagles. I don't know why I keep wanting to call them the the Phillies, but are they yeah, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Too many things going on right now. Uh, but Today, we are actually speaking of the Phillies. If you want more Phillies coverage, go to our friends at 2008 Phils. Uh, they have the world's biggest Phillies email newsletter. Uh, this, they're offering 75% off a subscription currently to this day in Philly sports history listeners. The link is in the description. Uh, that gets you access to everything they have on their site the 2008 uh, World Series. Uh, Banner T-shirt, access. Uh, 2008 fills will follow your Twitter, and then you have access to uh, giveaways, tickets, autographs, that type of thing. All for two dollars a month, twenty dollars for the year. Uh, definitely worth it. So go check out the link in the description for 2008 fills. And I do apologize if I was distracted. That's what was going on. My lighting was all screwed up. So hopefully I got that figured out and fixed now. Um, that's why I kept. I, I missed the 2008 fills read and kept calling the. The Eagles, the Phillies. But finally, a quick union update. Uh, they had another draw yesterday against Charlotte. Again, keep racking up those points. Improve your playoff positioning. Um, looking forward to their playoff run. Um, and again, go to phillygoat.com for, for union gear as well. All right. Finally, it's time to get to today's uh this day in Philly sports history. And we're going to go all the way back to 1883, which was the Phillies' inaugural year. They lost to those pesky Detroit Wolverines 9-3, to which is not even a team anymore. It's not even like they moved and became a different team. They're just a defunct team. Uh, but you had that a lot in the early days of Major League Baseball. On the mound that day for the Phillies, a.k.a. the Quakers, 
was John Coleman, and he took the loss. It was his 48th loss of the season, which still stands today as a Major League Baseball record. Let that sink in for a second. 48 times this man lost a game as the pitcher. Now, again, it was a different time back then. They didn't really have relievers. You went out, you pitched, and you did until your arm fell off. Basically, uh, the team just was not good. It was their inaugural year. He also has the record, and these records will never be broken. For most runs given up in the season with 510, as well as hits, 772. The Phillies on that season, their their first year in the bigs, uh, 17 and 81. Um, on a bright spot, you might think Coleman was just a bad pitcher. No, he was just a good pitcher on a horrible team at the wrong time. Uh, of their 17 wins, Coleman won 12 of them. So again, it's a, it was a different era, but that that 48 losses will never be broken. Neither will the 510 runs or the 772 hits. But on this day back in 1883, it was the Phillies losing to the Detroit Wolverines 9 to 3. Pitcher John Coleman suffered his 40 eighth loss of the season there are starting pitchers today that barely even get 48 starts uh so that is saying something so john might not be what you want to be remembered for but we will let your name live on here in this day in philly sports history okay time for who wore it best and Really, it was there was no wrong answer for this one, and I almost felt bad even putting it out there. Uh, but number twenty, uh, obviously the most iconic number in Philly sports history. Uh, two of the best to ever do it. Two legends: Mike Schmidt versus Brian Dawkins. It was Schmidt coming out on top with sixty-eight percent of the vote, and most of the rationale stemmed from not and, and like everybody who voted for Schmidt. Also put in, but no disrespect to Dawkins. That's how much Dawkins was respected. And ultimately, it came down to Schmidt being the best to ever play his position. Dawkins is one of the best. Where Mike Schmidt, everybody, the consensus was, was and is the best third baseman for right now to ever play the game. So that was the key Key. Uh, differentiation there and there were a lot of people that said i can't vote i'm going tie uh one guy said i'd rather just get the jersey with half dawkins half schmidt and i, I don't think you could go wrong there i've seen dawkins actually when he throws out the first pitch he has a jersey similar to that with schmidt and his self on the back of the jersey so doc b doc gets it and, and and i don't think again no disrespect to either one of these guys my two favorite i have my schmidt autograph there my Dawkins autograph back there. So this was like my head exploded even thinking about this. So number 20, the most iconic. I'm willing to go out on a limb and say the most iconic number ever. All right. Counting down from there, we're going to go with number 19 today. And not quite as iconic and uh, nothing against these guys. Sort of a letdown from two legends from number 20. But currently, Christian Pache wears number 19 Tanner McKee, a guy that a lot of people feel should be the Eagles' backup. And Garnett Hathaway for the Flyers this year will be number 19. Other notables to wear number 19, Mikkel Renberg of the Legion of Doom line. He was just a hair under making our list. Uh, J.J. Ortega-Whiteside, uh, my buddy Scott's going to – his his he was the, the lone J.J. truther out there, but he wore number 19. Golden Tate caught that touchdown in that Bears game. Tom Dempsey, the kicker with the half uh, the special boot, who had the record for the longest field goal um, for a long time. John Cruck, many people don't remember this, but wore number 19 his first two years in Philly. And then when he became number 29, Kevin Stocker wore number 19. Greg Dobbs, one of the unsung heroes off the bench of that 2008 championship team. And Raja Bell wore it the year the Sixers made that incredible finals run in 2000-2001. But today we're sticking with the hockey theme, believe it or not. But two Flyers and a Philly. Uh, couldn't decide between the two Flyers. But uh, Rick McLeish, one of the the, the stars uh, and really one of the leaders of that Broad Street Bully team, uh, was number 19. Scotty Hartnell, one of the more recent guys, sort of... Uh, one of those guys that uh, was there in the 2010 run and 
just became one of the faces of the franchise in recent years. And a guy that's still around Citizens Bank Park today. If you're ever there, go check out his barbecue. Greg the Bull Luzinski, uh, also wore number 19, uh, left fielder, power hitter for the 1980 Phillies. Now it's your turn. Who wore number 19 the best? Is it Rick McLeish? Is it Scotty Hartnell? Or is it Greg Luzinski? Be sure to get your vote in. And again, nothing against those three. It is sort of a come down. But again, not all numbers can be as iconic as number 20. Uh, but hopefully some of that magic will run off on number 19. So is it McLeish? Is it Hartnell? Is it Luzinski? Get your vote in. Don't forget to check out my buddies over the Clashing Conferences podcast. New episode for them dropped. I'm really looking forward to this. Things are starting to get heated, especially with uh, just the way the NFC East is good. So go check that out. The Clashing Conferences podcast, wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. On this day, back in 1883, John Coleman lost his 48th game when the Detroit Wolverines beat the Phillies 9-3. A Major League Baseball record that will never be broken. I am willing to go out on a limb and say there is no chance that will ever be broken. Congrats to DeAndre Swift on being the NFC Offensive Player of the Year. Or Offensive Player of the Week. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, Phil's look to to end the season strong against the Mets uh, and the Pirates. Let's cash that bet. Just give me six games and I'll be happy. Give me seven. I'll be even happier. Uh, The magic number is down to six to clinch a playoff spot. Seven for that top spot. Happy training camp day to all the Flyers fans out there. As always, go to Philly Goat. Use that promo code Jim Montgomery. Be sure to check out Back to the Future uh, when we talk about Barry Ashby. It's going to be another beautiful day leading into a crappy weekend. So go enjoy some sun today. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History. I'm Jim Montgomery. Go have yourselves a Thursday. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you.